Good morning, all of you, and welcome back to the online sessions on MWT. In the last class, we discussed about the various classifications of the microwave tubes, and in that, we discussed about there are two types of classifications. One is going to be O-type tubes. Another one is going to be M-type tubes. O-type tubes normally going to normally going to be microwave tubes. which is normally going to work out with low and medium frequencies and m type tubes are normally used for uh, very high frequencies which are going to be more than the medium microwave frequencies and under o type tubes we discussed about two types of tubes in that one is going to be reflex klistron and uh, another one is going to be another one is going to be the uh, microwave klistron multi uh, multi stage amplifier so it's going to be klistron tube amplifier and a klistron oscillator we discussed and uh, one more we have discussed about going to be slow wave microwave tubes and today's session what we do is we try to discuss about the reflex klistron reflex klistron microwave tube so reflex klistron microwave tube can also be called as a microwave oscillator at a low and medium frequencies now here in this session we try to discuss about the reflex klistron now before we go to the discussing about the reflex klistron why we are going towards microwave tubes so we are going to microwave tubes to overcome the difficulties that we normally face when we normally transmit microwave signals through a conventional tubes so what are the drawbacks of the conventional tubes to transmit signals at microwave frequency range the drawbacks are listed here they are known as inter electrode capacitance lead inductance effect transit time effect gain bandwidth limitation effect of radio frequency losses effect due to radiation losses so these are the various losses or drawbacks of the conventional tubes when you whenever we want to transmit a microwave signals so here already we discussed about certain losses like inter electrode losses lead inductance effect losses okay when we discussing about the antenna sent wave propagation so when we transmit a uh, signals at very high frequencies then definitely as the frequency increases uh, the inter electrode capacitance is normally going to get, normally going to get affected in a transmission line so imagine if you take a parallel wire transmission line so as the frequency increases what happens the inter electrode capacitance effect is normally going to Uh, take into effect because of this effect what happens all the frequency components which are above the certain frequency of at a microwave frequency range all that signals are going to get simply bypassed to the ground instead of uh, reaching to the load so that is what the inter electrode capacitance basically and lead inductance effect at very high frequencies uh, the leads of those particular wires are also be treated as a inductors so because of that inductance effect also you normally going to experience some losses in the transmission line to overcome them we have used a microwave strip lines so these microwave strip lines are normally going to work very well which is not which which are not going to introduce the inter electrode capacitance and lead inductance effect in the case of the uh, transmission of the microwave signals right so similar kind of Uh, a, a similar kind of effect is normally going to get going to get affected in the case of the uh, conventional tubes also so these conventional tubes also going to have a inter electrode capa capacitance effect lead inductance effect and transit time effect so what is transit time it is a time taken by the electrons to travel from cathode uh, to the cathode to the output uh, output side so that is what the time basically and this time is not normally going to be in sync with the frequency of the signals or velocity of the signals which are flowing in this particular conventional tubes and thereby what happens is we normally going to get lot of delays in the output signal so a lot of losses are also going to get encountered and next uh, problem is going to be gain bandwidth product limitation the gain bandwidth product is not going to be constant throughout the operation of the uh, conventional tubes uh, when we operate them onto the microwave signals and effect of the radio frequency losses due to dielectric effect and conductance effect so here what happens is the dielectric is nothing but the medium constant so every medium is going to have some uh, constant parameters and these parameters are normally purely depends on the 
uh, frequency so our, our uh, type of the material normally used so the effect of these dielectric and conductance is going to be predominant thereby the rf losses is going to be more at microwave frequencies and apart from this uh, the due to the inductance effect what happens is some of the signals are simply going to get radiated uh, as losses outside this particular uh, outside this particular conventional tube and uh, here due to this what happens is radiation losses are also going to increase so as a result what happens is the signal is going to get deteriorated when it is getting passed through a conventional tubes so therefore that is the reason why we normally going to use a microwave tubes whenever we wanted to generate or whenever we want to generate the signals at microwave frequency range or whenever we want to transmit and amplify the microwave signal frequencies so these are the basic drawbacks of the conventional tubes because of these drawbacks we will be simply going into the microwave tubes and these microwave tubes are going to be efficient are going to be efficient we have efficient microwave tubes are basically usually operate on the theory of the electron velocity modulation concept so here the in the previous classes we discussed about the frequency modulation we discussed about the phase modulation amplitude modulation so that really works good at rf signal frequencies when you go beyond the rf signal frequencies what happens is the frequency of signal will be simply going into uh, gigahertz range therefore the lumped circuit elements will not really be very good choice uh, to transmit the microwave signal frequencies in order to transmit the micro signal frequencies uh, we have to use the microwave components or microwave devices and microwave circuits so therefore in order to generate the signals at microwave signals we normally going to employ velocity modulation technique where as the lumped circuit elements lumped circuit elements are totally removed from the concept altogether therefore the microwave signals are generated by using the velocity modulation techniques so here all the microwave tubes are normally going to employ the velocity modulation technique concept so the electron transit time is used in the conversion of the dc power to the rf power that is called radio frequency power now here what is the basic principle of converting dc power to the ac power what is the major job of an oscillator every oscillator has to generate an ac output signal without any external ac input signal so but usually all the electronic components are going to operate with dc only so therefore the oscillator is more or less something like converting the dc power into the ac power that is dc power to the rf power so in that sense the microwave tubes are normally going to convert the dc power to the ac power by the principle of transit time so transit time is also going to be very important a uh, role going to play in the microwave tubes in generating the ac signals at microwave signal frequencies therefore the two concepts are important here called velocity modulation and transit time whenever we want to generate the microwave signal frequencies now let us look into the linear beam o type tubes so in linear beam o type tubes the magnetic and electric fields are linear to each other so therefore we call them as linear beam tubes are o type tubes so o type means what it is going to be something like you know original type tubes which are basic type tubes so the paramount o type tube is the two cavity klystron followed by the reflex klystron so here we normally going to employ reflex klystrons to normally generate to normally construct a o type tubes and one more two more varieties we have to construct o type tubes are going to be slow wave structures and a twist drawn uh, structures so these slow wave structures are also called as o type tubes but have non resonant periodic structures for electron interactions so they work on the non resonant periodic interactions they are known as non resonant tubes slow wave tubes are known as a non resonant tubes and a twist drawn is going to be hybrid amplifier which uses combination of klystron and slow wave structures okay so these three are the, the the these three are the various varieties one is going to be o type tubes comes under you know under o type tubes you normally going to have resonant tubes non resonant tubes 
and twistron type of the amplifier which is a combination of resonant as well as non resonant type of structures so these three varieties of the linear beam tubes can be constructed by using the microwave tubes okay so in the syllabus what we have in the syllabus we have two things one is going to be called as leafless klistron and multi cavity klistron amplifier these two we have in the syllabus therefore we discuss about only these two configurations of the linear beam tubes so there are two basic configurations of klistron tubes one is going to be leafless klistron basically used as a low power microwave oscillator so it generates the oscillations the next one is going to be the multi cavity klistron used as a low power microwave amplifier multi cavity klistron is normally used as a low power microwave amplifier okay we have to discuss these two in the syllabus for the o type tubes now practically practically how a reflex klistron looks like this practical reflex klistron looks like this okay so whereas this is a practical circuit which you normally going to find out in a uh, uh, radar systems so when you go to emd center or any other centers which generates microwave signals so we normally going to uh, encounter these kind of a klistron oscillators so this is what a practical klistron oscillator but in the laboratory we normally going to have very small klistron uh, oscillator and here this this is what here we normally going to have electron gun we normally going to have a grid over here and inside this we normally going to have a cavities and uh, output we normally going to take from here uh, where the this is going to be the rf output from the rf output is connected to the antenna this wire rf signal generated is normally connected to the transmitting antenna and thereby we normally going to see the output signal so this is what the practical uh, reflex klistron amplifier which is normally suitable to generate Uh, signal frequencies at a uh, signal frequencies at a kilowatts of power so microwave signals at kilowatts of power can be generated that means microwave signals means what around uh, 2.5 gigahertz signals at a power rating of 1 1150 kilowatts will be generated by using this particular uh, microwave klistron uh, reflex klistron oscillator and uh, there are two scientists there are uh, two scientists called russell and uh, sigurd varian of stanford university have invented this klistron oscillator so their prototype was first completed in august 1937 okay since after 1940 the klistron tube has uh, has become so popular to generate the microwave signals now what is the schematic diagram what is the schematic diagram of a klistron oscillator so the schematic diagram of klistron or something looks like this so as we discussed in the previous class that uh, the reflex klistron construction is more or less related to the cro or a crt in fact so in cro what we have seen what is the ma major purpose of cro the purpose of cro is to carry forward the electron beam to the fluorescent screen that is what the major job of the CRO. So here, similar kind of a tube is normally constructed here. So the outer periphery, this outer periphery is going to be a metallic periphery here, and this is going to be a cavity. This is going to be called as a single cavity. So this entire construction is called as a single cavity reflex klistron. Single cavity reflex klistron. It works on the principle of resonance. So hence we can call it as a resonant oscillator as well. So single cavity reflex klistron resonant oscillator. so that is the complete name of this particular uh, what is this schematic diagram right so now let us look into the constructional uh, things of this uh, uh, physical constructional parameters of this now here we need to compulsorily convert a dc signal into an ac signal so what is the job of oscillator oscillator is going to convert a dc signal into an ac signal or i can say oscillator is going to generate ac signals without any external input ac signal that is known as an oscillator now there is no external input to this particular circuit right so internally cathode is what sorry is the one which is generating the electrons are which is producing the electrons so cathode is going to produce the electrons and uh, there should be some element something like a accelerators in the case of cro so instead of accelerator we normally going to have a positively charged cavity so see this how it is positively charged this cavity is connected with a positive 
polarity of the battery negative polarity is connected to the cathode so therefore cathode is going to emit the electrons so all this particular section cathode section is normally put inside the electron gun so this electron gun inside electron gun we obviously going to have a is is known as a cathode for us so which is responsible for generating the electrons now based on the potential of this particular voltage the number of electrons are going to get generated from this particular cathode so practically this will be around 300 volts dc maximum we apply around 300 volts dc is going to be called as a beam voltage so it is known as a dc beam voltage now it is going to generate electron beam this cathode is normally going to generate electron beam therefore we call this voltage as a beam voltage dc beam voltage now electrons are negatively charged particles these electrons are going to get accelerated towards this positively charged positively charged resonant cavity so all these electrons are simply going to get attracted so all these electrons are going to get attracted towards the cavity now at the same time when the electrons are moving in this particular space now this space this entire space is known as the repeller space we call this space as a repeller space and the distance between the gap in the in the cavity this is the cavity gap this cavity gap is known as d we normally designate it with d and the distance between the cavity that the cavity and the repeller electrode so this is known as a repeller electrode is nothing but l okay so is nothing but l now here what is the construction let us see cathode is negatively charged and at the same time repeller is also negatively charged so this voltage we apply here is known as a repeller voltage the the voltage we apply here is going to be called as a repeller voltage which is negatively charged see here a negative charge of the battery is connected to the repeller so therefore repeller is always always going to be at negative potential okay so now this positive is connected to the ground so below this it is going to the ground obviously so positive is connected to the ground so therefore the repeller is negatively charged electrode now here the electrons are also negatively charged particles these electrons are normally going to get drifted are normally going to get accelerated towards this resonant cavity because of the attraction force of this cavity which is positively charged at the same time as the electron is moving in this particular repeller space this is neg totally negatively charged now the electrons will not really reach to the repeller will not hit the repeller it is going to get reflected back into the cavity uh, resonant cavity these electrons are simply going to get reflected back into the resonant cavity because of high repulsive force of the repeller electrode so this repeller electrode is normally going to have a very high repeller repelling uh, repulsion force because of this repulsion force these electrons are simply going to get uh, accumulated at this particular at a particular place now here what happens we can take three electrons as an example to explain about uh, the process of bunching what is bunching basically now here in order to generate a sine wave so sine wave is a combination of what infinite number of electron bunches so what is a bunch bunch is nothing but the the so many number of or n number of uh, electrons reaching at a point is known as a bunch here it is normally forming a bunch that means it, now this is a path of an electron one electron this is path of another electron this is path of another electron right so like this we normally going to have a path of a electron so something like i can say it has going to be electron a this is going to be electron b this is going to be say electron c so i, I just designate this with some name a b c so this is say capital a electron a capital b capital c b i can call it as a reference electron uh, a i can call it as a you know it is a is coming uh, a is coming uh, what is this uh, before the before this particular reference electron therefore it is going to be called as early electron so the c is coming after a so therefore it is going to be called as a late electron with respect to the reference electron so with respect to this now what happens now the bunches are normally going to get formed uh, at either ends of the resonant cavities now these bunches are going to form that means are going to form a uh, what i mean to say is electron density points 
so when you when you really trace out all these density points we normally going to get a sine wave we normally going to get a sine wave okay so that is how we normally going to form the electron bunches to get a sine wave which is going to be at a microwave frequency range now here what type of modulation is involved here velocity modulation is involved why the velocity modulation is involved you can see now the velocity of all these three electrons are changing continuously after it crosses the cavity gap after it crosses the cavity gap the electron velocity see the electron was moving actually towards the repeller but suddenly because of the repeller repulsive force the electron direction is simply getting changed so that means the velocity of the electron is simply getting changed so velocity change is there therefore i can call it as a velocity modulation so basically what is modulation modulation is nothing but a change so what is that we are changing now we are simply changing uh, the velocity of the electron we are changing therefore we call it as a velocity modulation so due to the process of velocity modulation bunches are going to get formed inside the cavity gap inside the cavity gap now this cavity gap inside this these are simply collected by a pickup loop output rf output pickup loop now we can connect we can collect the output from either one of these particular resonant cavities but once we connect once we tap output from one of the resonant cavity we don't touch other cavity okay it is up to us to connect now so similar kind of bunches are normally going to get formed for this particular cavity as well also so therefore many number of bunches many number of waveforms are going to get generated here and they are simply going to get picked up from this particular pickup loop so now this is how what is the base this is the basic operation of how an rf signal is generated or ac signal is generated from the applied dc voltage so this is the dc power supply applied uh, from dc power supply it is simply converting into the ac signal by the process of velocity modulation right now so this voltage u2 is known as a repeller voltage u1 is known as a beam voltage so repeller voltage is always going to be negative applied to the repeller and a beam voltage is always is also going to be negative voltage applied to the cathode so due to the process of velocity modulation we are getting the bunches here now this is space inside this is known as a repeller space okay or i can just call it as a reflection room and we normally going to put some accelerating grids just like we normally going to put a grids in the cathode cro uh, cathode ray tube that is cro similarly here also we normally going to put the accelerating grids in order to uh, accelerate the electrons because the cathode is normally going to pump the electrons in all the directions right in a zigzag directions so all of them has to be guided in a particular direction therefore we normally going to provide these kind of grids grids are something like a gaps where the electron beam will enter into these gaps only that is why it is called a uh, accelerating grids which is usually going to be of positively charged so therefore the electrons are simply guided here to travel in a particular direction instead of uh, simply uh, venturing randomly out of the cathode well so this is how the uh, rf signal is generated from the reflex klystron oscillator circuit okay so that means the operation is very simple operation is what that same as the cro they should be some they should be some person they should be some guy to generate the uh, electrons electron beam and this electron beam has to be converted into the ac signal electron beam is purely dc and this dc signal is converting into the ac signal in this process so by then i can say that it is working like an oscillator now why it is called as a reentrant oscillator it is called as a reentrant why because the electrons are entering twice into the cavity gap first of all it is entering here while it is going towards the repeller space then after some time it is simply once again coming back into the reentering into the cavity gap so therefore it is called as a reentrant type of the oscillators they are called as reentrant type of the oscillators now where is the feedback applied so this can this reentrant process due to reentrant process uh, what happens feedback is been applied feedback is is been applied in the circuit we already know from the basic oscillators oscillators are positively feedback circuits due to the positive feedback what happens oscillations are going to get generated similarly here also because of this particular feedback 
okay that means output actually it should go to the final uh, output terminal but it don't go it is getting reflected back because of the output voltage that means it is something like part of the output only part of the output only it is the reflections of the output only therefore this particular uh, uh, reflected signal it can be can be called as a feedback signal for us okay so this is what the basic schematic diagram of a reflex klystron oscillator right now as i was talking to you if single this reflex klystron can also be called as a reentrant cavity oscillator or a single reentrant cavity as a resonator so it is resonating to the given input signal frequencies that means here we are not we have we cannot really generate variable frequencies variable frequencies uh, we uh, we can just uh, uh, you know generate the signal frequencies uh, at a resonance now here uh, okay let us uh, that means here what is the main logic behind uh, generating the waveform here the main logic generating behind is forming of bunches due to velocity modulation due to the velocity modulation bunches are getting formed and different bunches uh, when you trace out all these bunches we normally going to get a sine wave so because of that we can say that it is generating the oscillations right so now the electron beam emitted from the cathode is accelerated by the grid and passes through the cavity anode and into the repeller space between the cavity anode and the repeller electrode see this is what the same thing that i have just given in the slide here the electron beam first emitted from the cathode k and is accelerated by the grids which are there in between the cathode and the cavity and uh, these accelerated electrons after passing through the grid passes through the cavity anode into the repeller after that into the repeller space repeller space in between the cavity anode and the repeller electrode so now the feedback required to maintain oscillations within the cavity is obtained by reversing the electron beam emitted from the cathode towards the towards the repeller voltage and sending it back to the cavity so this is what the feedback signal we normally going to consider here so the electrons in the beam are velocity modulated before the beam passes through the cavity the second time so before the beam passes through the cavity to the second time that means the electrons are the electrons are visiting the cavity two times second time when the electron visited the cavity means what it is due to the velocity modulation we can say and give up the energy to the cavity to maintain the oscillations so to the cavity what it is giving to the cavity it is simply giving a bunches of electrons at various time periods at various time periods with with, with various amplitudes so therefore we are getting the oscillations what is a sine wave if you draw a sine wave between time period t and velocity and some velocity with respect to time period t and velocity we draw a sine wave no so that means a waveform is something like which is changing with respect to time that means every point on the sine wave is simply changing with respect to time so those changes we are getting in terms of bunches at different times we get different uh, we get different bunches with different uh, magnitude values thereby we can say that it is generating the oscillations for us so this type of klystron is called as a reflex klystron oscillator because of the reflection reflex action of the electron beam in the repeller space we call it as a reflex klystron because the electrons are reflected back into the cavity therefore we call it as a reflex klystron oscillator now next one is reentrant cavity why it is called as reentrant cavity same same uh, answer once again the electron beam the electrons are reentering into the cavity so because of that reason we call it as a reentrant cavity so therefore the reentrant cavity is a design for use in klystron and microwave triodes a reentrant cavity is one in which the metallic bond is extend into the interior of the cavity okay so that means here because of this construction only we are able to uh, pick up the rf output signal which is at a microwave frequency range now what are the advantages of this tube once again same advantages we mentioned earlier inductance effect is going to decrease reduce resistance effects so re resistance means what it is going to oppose the flow of electrons is called resistance so the resistance is going to be less and it is also going to prevent the radiation losses so because of this construction what happens is the losses of the signal inside the 
inside the resonant microwave tube is normally going to be very very less now what is the mechanism of generating the oscillations so it is assumed that the oscillations are set up in the tube initially due to noise are switching transients and the oscillations are sustained by the device operation so uh, as usually every oscillator will not get the output signal immediately after you apply the power supply so after certain time only we normally going to get the sustained oscillations here also same thing is normally going to be there initially oscillations are normally going to get set up which is not going to be stable in nature okay so all these due to noise oscillations are going to get set up so after a certain time period what happens automatically the oscillator is normally reached to the stable state and finally we will be getting the stable output signals called as sustained oscillations so here see in the similar fashion uh, after certain time period we normally going to get the sustained oscillations from this particular microwave klistron tube now the electrons passing through the cavity gap d experience this rf field and are velocity modulated so all these electrons passing through the cavity gap are velocity modulated inside the repeller space and once again they re enter into the cavity due to the process of velocity modulation to form the bunches so forming bunches means what getting the ac signal for us now we normally going to explain the Uh, velocity modulation by the applicate diagram so this diagram is known as an applicate diagram if you see so this is nothing but the time of travel of the signal now this is going to be the distance in the repeller space the distance covered by the electrons in the repeller space now in forming the bunches this entire l is nothing but the distance between the cavity gap and the repeller space we discussed about this repeller space as l so this is nothing but something like delta l so what is delta l now we just go back once again to the construction diagram the distance between the repel the distance between the cavity resonant cavity and the repeller electrode is nothing but the l so this is the l we normally going to use the entire distance l now if you observe this carefully now this entire l this this is totally l here we are considering only delta l what is delta l a small change in l is nothing but delta l that means the total distance is going to be l here see this now this from the cavity to the repeller is nothing but l now it is covering up to delta l portion from here to here it is only going to be delta l portion so this delta l portion only we are considering here to get the oscillations now okay so that means it is simply forming the bunches with delta l combinations <clears throat> now let us assume that there are three electrons here don't see the sine wave and all let us see only three electrons what three electrons we are going to see electron b electron a electron c so electron b me starting at time period tv electron c is starting at time period tc electron a is starting at time period say some ta all right so this pi by 2 omega is a periodic time period of the wave which is getting generated the output so therefore we consider that as going to be pi by 2 omega is going to be the periodic time period <clears throat> that means here we are always going to consider the stable responses stable response means what periodic signal has to be generated from the output of the reflex crystron oscillator circuit or oscillator tube okay now here what is happening let us see the, now let us explain this bunching process with the applicate diagram so this diagram is known as an applicate diagram in this applicate diagram what happens now this uh, tb is known as a reference electron which is going to be the reference point where no extra energy is applied for the next no extra no extra no more extra energy applied to the electron to move in the repeller space that means whatever the electron is normally uh, going to have energy that means no kinetic energy is normally uh, applied for the electron for the electron b which is start which whose time period is going to be tb similar to these electrons all these electrons i can consider as going to be a, a electrons this bunch is going to be b electrons and these electrons are going to be c electrons all right so now here if you if you observe carefully now here this uh, this is getting accelerated with its own velocity 
predefined velocity therefore we normally going to get a straight line path obviously here and it is normally going to cover a certain distance to to reach to a particular point then there is another electron called as a early electron this uh, t this a electrons are early electrons they are coming before they are coming before the reference electrons now these electrons are negatively drifted that means negatively uh, drifted here so because of this deceleration what happens uh, what happens now early electrons early electrons are starting before the this electron and uh, they will be going slower here because of the deceleration so because of deceleration what happens here because this early electrons energy is less than the energy of this particular electron and this energy this is because the energy of this electron is lower it is going somewhat slower slowly it will be going towards uh, mo moving towards the repeller space and at the same time it is getting reflected back also but the deflection is not shown here uh, while forming the bunches here now similarly let us look into another electron called electron c this electron c is coming after the electron reference electron b so it is known as a this is this is coming before this is coming after so i can call this electron as going to be late electron okay now this late electrons energy is going to be more this is positive positive means what more acceleration is applied here okay because of it is going to get the more acceleration because anybody is coming later on is going to have more accumulation of energy so that means the newer generation people are going to have more knowledge why because they are going to have internet they are going to have so many uh, you know uh, textbooks okay they got lot of information available to them therefore they can acquire more knowledge than the old people similar to that this electron is coming after this tv therefore this electron is going to go with more kinetic energy so therefore it will be reaching the, the, to this point fastest so therefore it is called as a fast electron now what happens is all these three electrons will be meeting at a particular point based on the mode of the operation that means this bunching is not going to happen for all the modes these bunches are going to happen accidentally at certain modes of operation only other than those modes bunches are not simply getting formed and hence no question of any wave form generated at the output other than these modes so intermediate to these modes of forming of bunches no no uh, ac signals are generated okay no ac signals are generated in this particular process so this diagram is known as an applicate diagram so using this applicate diagram we say that a single bunch is formed like this like this many bunches are getting formed to generate a square wave like this see here this is one bunch so imagine that this is a sine wave signal we going to have so this sine wave is a combination of many such dot points this is one dot point another dot another dot another dot this is a bunch this is a bunch this is a bunch this is a bunch like this many bunches are getting formed so here also many bunches are getting formed by the uh, alternating nature of the electron beams which are getting simply propagating in the repeller space so due to this particular variable nature of forming of the bunches we normally going to get a ac signal at the output at the rf at the uh, microwave signal frequencies so therefore we can call this as an oscillator we, you know, we explain the operation whenever in the exam uh, a question as a question will come to explain the operation of the reflex crystron then what do you should do you should draw the schematic diagram of a reflex crystron oscillator and you should explain the operation with the help of the applicate diagram so that explanation has been given in the top now see using applicate diagram what explanation we can give we have just now discussed the uh, discussed about three types of electrons one is going to be the reference electron b is known as reference electron a is known as early electron c is sorry a is known as a is known as early electron c is known as late electron okay so a b a is known as early electron c is known as late electron so with these three electrons we normally going to have now a is a if you see this electron a is is coming at a negative part of the signal that means it is deceleration it is going to get decelerated here and uh, therefore the velocity is going to become slow 
Now here it is coming in the positive part, so it is going to get accelerated. So therefore, the electrons are going to go at a faster pace. Now these electrons are moving at a speed of what? What? What is the speed of these electrons? The speed of these electrons are megahertz frequencies. That is a uh, one by ten power nine. That means in one second, in one second, ten power nine electrons are simply getting, getting passed to this particular cavity. So therefore, at that speed, the bunches are simply getting formed. So therefore, now I can from now on I can say that B is the reference electron, A is the early electron, C is the late electron. So A is nothing but sorry, A is nothing but A, A is nothing but the late electron, C is nothing but the early electron. So it is coming before. C is coming before A. A is coming. C is coming after. C is coming after B. Therefore, it is going to be called as a. Uh, C is coming after B. So it's going to be called as a late electron, and uh, A is coming before B. So therefore, it is going to be called as a. Early electron. It is coming before then. See, everything is with respect to reference. With respect to reference, how is A? Electron, how is B electron? With respect to B, A is coming before A is coming uh, A is coming before B. Therefore, it is called as early electron. C is coming after B. Therefore, it is going to be called as a late late electron in the time scale. Something like a delayed version. Okay. So, based on that, we can just explain the operation. Now, the electron C, which encounters the positive half cycle of the RF field. See here, the positive half cycle of the RF field in the cavity gap D will be accelerated. So that means the electron B, electron C, is encountered the positive half cycle of the RF cycle. So therefore, it is normally been accelerated very fast. That means the electron, the electron C, is normally going to get accelerated by positive charge. We know that electrons are normally going to get attracted by the positive charge. So as it is the positive half cycle of the signal, we can say that it, that means the polarity, the polarity of the electron at C, or the force on the electron at C is going to be more positive than the electrons at a point A. That is what we mean to say. So therefore, the force, the acceleration force of the electrons at C. Is going to be more the the acceleration the accelerative force of electrons at C is more than the acceleration force of the electrons at A. So therefore, the uh, C electrons are going to be faster than the A electrons. So the same thing has been explained in this particular uh, description. So I can just say that now the electron C, which encountered the positive half cycle of RF field in the cavity gap, means it is going to experience more positive voltage, and they will be accelerated. So that therefore they are called as a fast electrons. So anybody is moving fast, they reach to the destination fastly. So B is nothing but a reference electrons which encountered zero RF field because it is totally on the zero line, which pass uh, with unchanged original velocity. So whatever may be the velocity of the electron which is there at the beam voltage, which is there at the grid, same force it is normally uh, with same force is normally going to move ahead towards the repeller space. And electron A, which encounters the negative half cycle uh, of the RF field, will be retarded on entering the repeller space. It is going retarded means what? It is going to get a less accelerated voltage in comparison with the C electrons. Therefore, they go slow. So, in this process, what happens? All these three electrons will meet at a particular point and forming a bunch. So, like this, we normally going to get. Infinite number of bunches are simply going to get formed, uh, thereby getting a sine wave signal for us. So all these velocity modulated electrons will be repelled back to the cavity by the repeller due to the negative potential. So this is what the basic concept of uh, velocity modulation. So all these velocity modulated electrons will be repelled back to the cavity. To the cavity second time by the repeller electrode due to the negative potential. So this is what all these velocity modulated electrons will be repelled back to the cavity second time by the repeller electrode due to the negative potential. So this is how it is normally reaching to the uh, output cavity, output re uh, uh, repeller cavity. 
so the repeller distance l and the voltages can be adjusted the repeller distance l and the voltages can be adjusted to receive all the electrons at the same time on the positive peak of the cavity rf voltage cycle now here based on the variations based on the variations in the repeller voltage what happens is we normally going to get different uh, uh, wave forms at the output of the oscillator so that means if you change the repeller voltage the number of modes the modes that we normally going to get is normally going to get changed so the mode of the signal is normally depends on the repeller voltage so thus the velocity modulated electrons are bunched together and lose their kinetic energy when they encounter the positive cycle of the cavity rf field so that means here the kinetic energy is simply converted lose their kinetic energy and simply they are going to get uh, tapped uh, from the output side okay so this is how we normally going to generate the bunches so bunches once occur per cycle uh, centered around the reference electron and these bunches transfer maximum energy to the gap to get the sustained oscillations so this is how we normally going to get sustained oscillations so maximum energy will be transferred to the gap because of the bunches to get the sustained oscillations so for oscillations to be sustained the time taken by the electrons to travel in repeller space and back to the gap is known as the transit time must have an optimum value so here in order to form bunches not all the not all the electrons are going to form the bunches only electrons which are uh, uh, happen to come at a particular mode only going to form the bunches therefore the transit time should be an optimum value to form a bunch this is what one of the important uh, uh, criteria that you have to bother about so for oscillations to be sustained the time taken by the electrons the time taken by the electrons by the electrons to travel into the repeller space and back into the gap must have the maximum value must have the maximum value and one more thing you have to see that the repeller voltage should not be equal to should should not become positive it should be more 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 negative only why because the electron should not hit the repeller electrode if the electrons at such a very high speed is going to hit the repeller electrode the repeller electrode is normally going to get burnt off with that high temperature so therefore no electron should hit the repeller electrode that is what the main constraint here that we have to compulsorily take into consideration to get the sustained oscillations now next one is next one is going to be the modes of modes various modes of operation modes of operation uh, of reflex crystal or modes of oscillations so the electron should return after 1 3 4 2 3 4 Are three, three, fourth, etc. Cycles. Most optimum departure time is going to be that. So, if capital T is the time period at the resonant frequency of the output generated, then T naught, small T naught, is the time taken by the reference electron to travel in the repeller space between entering the repeller space and returning back to the cavity at the positive uh, peak voltage on formation of the bunch. So, in a for formation of bunch uh, how much time period is going to take it is going to take like uh, it is a is once again a totally design parameter design issue here we should know how much uh, how much is the time period of the signal that we want to generate that is capital t based on this capital t we normally going to design this particular t not okay so once we fix up a parameter for a particular mode of operation it will be fixed to work in that particular mode of operation only thereby we can we cannot say that uh, we will be generating a variable frequencies once we set once we provide or uh, once we do the setup to generate the frequencies uh, from this particular resonant oscillator okay so the formula for uh, the resonant the transit time is equal to t is equal to n plus 3 by 4th time period that means in a 3 by 4th time period only the electrons has to return back the electrons has to return back so therefore where this cap i can call this as n plus 3 by 4 into t is going to be the transit time and this capital n is nothing but equal to n plus 3 by 4 where n is going to take integer values as n is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 and n is going to be the mode of oscillations so the power at a minimum mode at a minimum mode the power level signal is going to be really uh, maximum in the in the crystal nose so 1 3 by 4 is ideally going to generate a signal with a maximum power in the reflex crystal oscillators 
so the mode of oscillations of a reflex crystal can be named as something like uh, n is equal to 3 by 4 1 3 by 4 okay 2 3 by 4 etc for modes n is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 respectively so the power output of a lowest mode is going to be maximum so usually the n is equal to 0 is not considered so n is equal to 1 is considered so 1 3 by 4 usually is going to give up a large power output signals for us okay so this is what regarding the operation of the reflex crystal oscillator so in the today we end up here for today's session uh, uh, after we covering about the operation of the reflex crystal oscillator in the next class what we see is we get into the another part of the crystal oscillator that is going to be called as a crystal multi cavity crystal amplifier so we discuss about crystal amplifier working okay uh, basic construction diagram working and this is going to be the practical multi cavity crystal oscillator multi cavity crystal oscillator looks like this so here if you see that this now this is a three cavity crystal this is one cavity second cavity third cavity it is going to be a three cavity crystal oscillator more the number of cavities that will be having more is going to be the uh, gain of the amplifier we normally going to achieve from this particular multi cavity crystal oscillators thank you very much for today's session